So Denise, you've been busy. Tell us what's going on with MSD. Well, it's springtime, and of course, MSD provides safe, clean waterways. And these are just uh, some tips and information on how we can do this to keep our waterways clean. Take a look. So there, here is another great segment with MSD who provide our safe, clean waterways. And today we're going to be talking about rain gardens because it deals with the health of water streams. And we're going to find out more of it from Mr. Brett Clark. Brett, welcome to Urban Lifestyles. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my, name, my name is Brett Clark. I'm with MSD. I'm in the water qual quality side of things with the MS4 permit. And I am the post-construction control lead here. And uh, we're here at the Lexington Grinstead site, uh, the front, the starting of our water protection tunnel. And this here is a rain garden. And it uh, collects the rainwater from the hard surfaces here, uh, like the parking lot. Well, do we have water that flows when you say hard surfaces? Would that mean only in a commercial area or does that also pertain to residential? It, it can be either setting. So uh, you can collect rainwater from the rooftops at your home. Uh, it's a parking lot at a commercial site. So what is the importance of these rain gardens then? Uh, the rain garden is going to collect the storm water and instead of pushing it away as fast as possible, it's going to kind of hold it back uh, so you're pre preventing flooding and you're going to infiltrate it, which are allowing the, the storm water to get into the, to the soil and the groundwater instead of our sewer system. So Brett, because these rain gardens are important then, who can plant these and what does it consist of? A uh, short answer is anybody can plant these. So anybody uh, can plant these in their backyard uh, and they're really good at uh, low lying areas that have standing water um, or a school, anybody that's trying to, you know, control the water on their site. Okay. And in doing this, what would you say would be some of the beneficial outcomes then? I know you mentioned about flooding, but yeah. for people to see whether it's schools or commercial or residential areas. So with the rain garden, you're obviously you're controlling the stormwater. So um, we're trying to, to keep water from ponding in areas. Um, and we're also trying to improve the water quality. So we're trying to collect things like garbage and sediments from getting into our waterways. So when you mentioned uh, about things like sediments, would that include like grass clippings or pet waste or things like that? Correct. So it's a low-lying area that's going to collect all those things. So Brett, what are the components then of planting such a garden to get the benefits? Yeah, so uh, when we talk about a rain garden, it's mostly planted with native plants and those native plants have uh, uh, the benefit of having really long root system that uptakes nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. Uh, so those, when you see really green grass and people have the fertilizers, those things would wash off into the rain garden and those plants would actually uptake those uh, nutrients. Oh, it's very interesting. Now, what about how it affects the soil? So the soil, uh, see, you're gonna want soil that's very permeable. So you're, it's gonna be more of an engineered, so very sandy, so 70 to 85% sand. Um, you do not want clay because then you have that standing water and you want to see that water disappear in uh, 24 to 36 hours. Otherwise, you have an issue with mosquitoes. So, Brett, now I'm really thinking because I'm going to do this, but I need more visual to help me uh, to put this together. So uh, I think you're going to walk me through what that looks like. Yes. So in a perfect world, we all have really sandy soil and the water disappears uh, instantly, but that's not always the case and sometimes we have uh, very clay soils. So we want to use an engineered soil, which is, we talked about, is a high uh, sand content. And then we have a stone and gravel layer, which acts as sort of a storage area. And um, we like to promote the use of an underdrain, which is actually just a perforated pipe underneath everything that allows the water, instead of ponding at the bottom, it allows it to get it away from the site but still has the benefit to filter out some of those uh, pollutants. So I know that we are in the season for spring and summer's coming. Does this stay in place just for the warm weather seasons or is this something that stays in place all year long? This is something that you'll have uh, all year long. Obviously there's maintenance involved with the plants in the summertime and in the wintertime, those are gonna kinda die back. So I'm gonna plant this in my yard. What's the good location to do so? 
So if you're gonna plant this in the yard, you wanna make sure you're at least 10 feet away from the from your building and kind of downhill. But anywhere there's a downspout from your uh, house or you have an area that's ponding water in a low spot, that'd be a great spot for a rain garden. So Brett, I am thoroughly interested. How can I find a good uh, means of finding all types of resources in regards to this and maintenance? Yes, yeah, so on our water quality website, we actually have a ton of resources, including this handbook, which we have a digital version, and it'll actually go through step-by-step -step on how to build a rain garden, even plants that you can choose for your rain garden. One of the new resources we have is an interactive plant guide, and it uh, basically has a set of parameters that you can put in, and um, uh, whether it's full shade or uh, sun, so plants that fit each scenario and help you pick a plant plants for your rain garden. Okay, because that that was going to be one of my questions: which plant do I want to pick specifically for you know the uh, environment that I have? So that makes a lot of sense. Yes, and we, and we also have lots of resources on maintenance as well, because that's a key component to a rain garden. Well, again, you know, that's a great piece about what they're doing with the waterways, and it's good to know how we can help. Yeah, and so I'm thinking about planting one of those gardens mm -hmm. so I can get more information offline and seeing what I can do, especially in certain areas of the yard where it could benefit. And you're planting a garden? No, this, well, anyway, I'm going to do it. We'll take a quick break and back with more.